everyone, and welcome to another episode of Crafty Beer Reviews. Today I have a really special episode for you guys because I am doing a mini vertical of Founders Backwoods Bastard. I have the brandly, the brandly, brand newly released 2013 bottle, and then I also have a 2012 bottle from my cellar. Now, one thing before I get into this, the 2013 actually had a black plain crown versus the 2012 had the traditional founders logo on there so a little weird but whatever i'm really excited to dig into this so let's go ahead and check out the aroma on the 2013 oh yeah right away i'm getting big bourbon uh, there's a lot of oak in here i'm getting some caramel some toffee some butterscotch Almost a hint of like a brown sugar. There's definitely some vanilla in there as well. But yeah, definitely forward on the oak and the bourbon for sure. Smells really good. I do get a touch of booze, but not too much. And it is a bourbon barrel aged beer, so what would you expect? Let's check out the aroma on the 2012. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow, is that different. So on this one, I'm picking up a lot of vanilla. There's still a big bourbon. The oak's a little bit more subtle on this one as well. I'm getting some nice dark fruits, like some figs, raisins, plums. I'm getting some more of that butterscotch, the toffee, the caramel. It doesn't smell quite as sweet as that, and it's definitely a little less boozy, although you definitely get some booze. But wow, yeah, both of these beers smell fantastic. Ah, I can't believe I'm doing this, guys. Let's go ahead and check out the taste on the 2013. Cheers. Wow. Just like in the aroma. First thing I bit with is bourbon you definitely get that oak the vanilla is a little bit more present on the taste than it was in the aroma as well definitely getting those really sweet notes like the toffee the caramel the brown sugar i'm getting very faint 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 hits of fruit but nowhere near what i was picking up in the aroma in the 2012 Yeah, I'm definitely give the booze as it goes down. It's full body, has a nice creamy coating type of mouthfeel as well. It does have some bitterness though from the oak, so it's not cloyingly sweet. And you're definitely getting the 10.2% as of now. Drinks really nice though. I'm excited for this one though. I think this is probably aged out really well. Let's go ahead and take our first taste of the 2012. Cheers, guys. Wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> that is so good. Right away, I do get the bourbon, but then I get a huge amount of vanilla. There's big dark fruits in this. I get the figs, the raisins, the plums. I'm getting the oak in there. I'm getting big caramel, toffee, butterscotch. Wow. This is really, really nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, the vanilla is definitely more present in this batch than I think it is in the 2013. And what's nice, too, is that the boost is mellowed a little bit. Now, it is still drinking kind of hot, but it's not bad at all. I think that the alcohol level in this really helps to cut some of that sweetness, especially now that it's picked up some of the dark fruits. And it does have that little bit of a bitterness kick, so finishes pretty dry, but again, a Big, full body. It has a creamy coating mouthfeel. This is super, super tasty. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is good stuff. Uh, I would say that in 2013, while fresh, it's good, but I'm, I'm definitely thinking I prefer the aged a little bit more just because the flavors have seemed to really blend a little bit more. You're getting those dark fruit notes. I think the vanilla is also more present in this. The oak's a little bit more tame. 
Versus this match, I think that the oak's definitely more present for sure. Yeah. Right away. The bourbon, the oak are the two biggest things. And then you get those sweeter notes. You do definitely get some vanilla, but not as much. And then you definitely get the burn as it goes down. But this is... Either way, if you can find this beer, you're not going to have a bad beer on your hands, which is really awesome. Yeah. And then... Definitely get the bourbon, no doubt about it. But those big dark fruit notes, the bigger vanilla presence, a little bit more of a tame wood presence, and then the caramel, the toffee, the butterscotch, the brown sugar. Wow. So awesome. As far as a rating goes, guys, for when I reviewed this beer last year, it was hands down one of my favorites for 2012. And I think the 2013 batch is definitely awesome. However, now that I've had a chance to have an aged version I can't go with a perfect score. Again, I gave it a perfect score last year, but not the case. For the 2013 version of Backwoods Bastard, I'm going with a 9.6 out of 10. I think it is a great bourbon barrel aged scotch ale. You know, you get the bourbon, you get the oak, you do have some of that vanilla, and then you get those sweeter notes. There's almost a little bit of smoke in each one, but really, really tame compared to a lot of scotch ales, and I suspect that partly has to do with the barrel aging. Very nice stuff. If you have it, I would say definitely drink one fresh if you've never had it. However, if you had, I would say wait a year personally, but everyone has a different palate, so you just have to see for yourself. As far as the rating goes for the 2012, guys, I am going with a 9.8 out of 10. I think that this is really phenomenal. However, now that I've had so many more beers, I don't think it deserves a perfect score. However, it is an amazing beer. It's definitely an A beer. If you have one in your cellar, I think now is a fantastic time to crack it open. And if you don't want to, I think it'll age beautifully for a longer time too. But awesome, awesome beer no matter what. And I do also want to give you guys a disclaimer. A couple months ago, I was lucky enough to have the 2012 on tap. And oh my god. If you guys ever have a chance to have aged Backwoods Bastard on tap, run, do not walk your bar. Alright guys, so for my musical recommendation tonight, I was thinking, what would a Backwoods Bastard want to listen to? And I thought, well, bluegrass and folk, right? I mean, you guys agree. Yeah. So, I want you guys to check out an artist by the name of Psychograss and their 2005 record. Now, hear this. They are a traditional bluegrass group, although they do have some folk influences as well. They do a lot of faster paced songs. Really, really good stuff. They're a lot of fun. I think it'd be cool. And speaking of Backwoods Bastards, not to offend anyone, but for a long time this beer was not allowed in Alabama, which I think is kind of ironic. Yeah. Again, not to offend anyone, just saying, if there is ever a bunch of Backwoods Bastards. Alright, now that I've pissed off everyone, <laughs> uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoy review number 200. Please leave me some comments, give me a like, all that good stuff. And I hope whatever you're doing involves good craft beer. See ya.